Today I am at Goat Marsh Trail and it's at the foot of Mount St. Helens. It's December, it's beginning of December and there was no snow coming all the way up and then we come around a bend and it was a lot of snow. We actually had to park a little bit further and hike an extra half a mile because of the snow on the road or on the, on the forest road. But uh, take a look at this. So yeah, I know it's a blue sky, but uh, we're looking at rain for the next, or in this case up here, snow uh, for the next week straight. Uh, so uh, this was like the only chance to come up. I was hoping that around sunset, we would uh, maybe have some clouds form on the top of the mountain or a little something something, but uh, probably not gonna happen. Um, but that light is gonna get nice and soft as that sun goes down, which is happening right now. And I've got a nice little reflection happening in this little water pool. Um, so there's one shot that I can come away with today. Um, the hike in is about, well, if you can get to the trailhead, it's only about a mile, mile and a quarter to get here. And it's not too bad at all. Um, but it's far enough off the beaten path. A lot of people don't come. So again, the composition is real, real basic. A uh, little bit of a leading line from this little um, pond. It's partly frozen over. I got the reflection right here leading up into the mountain and uh, I just overexposed it so you can see what's going on there. But um, uh, I'm gonna bracket my shots obviously because over here is really dark and over there is really, really dark. So um, let me grab a couple shots and uh, we'll see if I can find anything else. So when you're photographing in the snow, there's a few things to think about. Um, one is that the snow will make it a little bit easier to get rid of distractions because it'll cover stuff. And then the downside to that is if you get too much of it, it just becomes this huge blob of nothing between you and your subject. So there's a line, a fine line between trying to find a composition that um, gives you leading lines and shows you, takes you into your subject, but doesn't include just broad swaths of, of just white nothingness. On the far side of the lake over there, of the marsh it was just an open area and, it, and if it had been the water it would have been awesome we probably could have got a reflection uh of the, of the mountain but because it was snow covered it was a non-issue a non-starter there was no really leading lines and you had this gigantic amount of nothingness between you and the mountain um, and even getting down low you still would have just had pretty much nothing in your foreground and then uh, a row of trees and then the mountain way 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 away so uh, snow is a it's a little bit of a, of a good and a bad, and you have to like um, uh, make sure you take that into account. It simplifies the scene, but you still have to do your basic thought process of composition and finding leading lines and finding a way to mitigate that huge amount of nothingness if you get your tripod too high or there's no middle ground. So my current composition looks something like this. Um, so I've got these crisscross logs that I really like here in my foreground. And I'm using a wide angle. I am at 16 millimeters. My camera is, is tilted down. So it's exaggerating the length of like this log here and all of this that's going on. And it's like a crisscross pattern all the way back. And then I've got Mount St. Helens back there. And it's starting to turn a nice little red color that is, is the sunset. It's just gonna get a little bit more intense, I think. But uh, yeah, over here, I've still got a, a pretty big bit of nothingness. Uh, I'm obviously still having to bracket my shots because everything right here in the foreground is like just really dark. And then the mountain is still really bright and so is the sky. So I'm still bracketing my shots and, uh, you know, F11, um, letting ISO 50 and letting the shutter fall wherever it needs to because it's very quiet, very still. All right, so here's my composition. Um, wide angle lens, tilting the lens, uh, tilting the camera down, and that it really exaggerates everything that's in the foreground as far as the size, and it becomes a really good uh, foreground element. And I've got my tripod really high because I wanted to make sure that there was some space between uh, these little snow um, 
mounds so that I it was you know they didn't bleed over into one another so hopefully I'm making that happen right there um, and then the mountain is kind of over to the upper left and we're losing the light on it as we speak uh, I've already got a couple shots I'm gonna take a couple quick more let's do this this is uh, bracketing and again since I'm trying to film and do this at the same time so the light is totally gone and um, we're gonna, I'm going to pack up the stuff and, and head back to the car before it gets pitch black. I'll still have to use a flashlight to get all the way back. But um, shooting in the snow presents a unique set of challenges. Uh, in addition to the cold, having to wear gloves, uh, operating camera controls, uh, the snow white balance becomes really problematic. My, I'm going to have to deal with that in post. The mountain was really, really uh, uh, pink and orange as the sun was hitting it. But everything in my foreground is going to be extremely blue, crazy blue. That I'm gonna have, and it's gonna be underexposed no matter what. I'm, I'm gonna have to correct all of that in post. There's just no way around uh, not having to do that. But um, I'll show you the photos I got. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell. I release a brand new video each and every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and see you next time. My first composition just really didn't work as a, a color image. This, the sky was just incredibly blue and everything was so deep in shadow, I decided to make it a black and white and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. I love the contrast, I love the little highlights in the snow and Mount St. Helens looks fantastic. For the second shot, I decided to leave it color. The sky had a nice glow to it, a little bit of yellow in it. I love the color on the logs that I would have lost if I'd have went to black and white. And the, the mountain was lit very nicely as the sun was setting. So keeping it color worked really well. I minimized the sky as much as I possibly could and allowed just the leading lines of the logs to take you all the way back to Mount St. Helens. For the last photo, I decided to go back to black and white. I just really love the way that the snow looks compared to the, to the little um, reeds that are frozen and that little stream at the base. And I love the light, dark, light, dark of the progression as you go from foreground to background. Again, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.